Portions of TV23's Internet provided by SWKO Wireless Internet. Covering the High Plains with news, weather, and information. From TV23 Studios in Simplet, this is High Plains Today. Hi, everybody. Good Monday. It is December 28th, 2015. Welcome to High Plains Today, right here on TV23. Hope you had a good Christmas weekend. On today's show, I'll be joined by Mr. Ryan Petty. We're going to take a look at some college basketball. Now let's take a look at some of the stuff that's happening out there. A head-on crash on Highway 54 killed three people Wednesday evening. The crash killed 20-year-old Maggie Michelle Hall of Elkhart, 24-year-old Carl Allen Hall of Elkhart, and 29-year-old Hector Rene Gonzalez of Wichita. The Kansas Highway Patrol reports the crash occurred at about 6 p.m. Wednesday evening just east of Bloom in Ford County. 36-year-old Juan Lopez of Worthington, Minnesota, was driving west on Highway 54 and attempted to pass multiple semis. His car struck Maggie Michelle Hall's eastbound car head-on. Lopez and passengers, 32-year-old Yvonne Morales of El Paso, Texas, 4-year-old Anna Morales, and 2-year-old Adrian Morales were also injured. At about 2.17 p.m. on Saturday, liberal firefighters were paged to an unknown type of fire at Big Bites Mexican Grill at 720 North Kansas Avenue. Now, the first fire units arrived on scene and reported smoke from the roof of the business. The business was closed at the time of the fire. Firefighters made entry and were met with heavy smoke conditions throughout the building. Now, the fire was located in the kitchen area of the restaurant. The business suffered extensive fire damage to the kitchen and dining area. Fire is believed to be accidental in nature. And, well, we done goofed. That's what the National Weather Service office in Dodge City had to say. There were several reasons that this winter weather event did not pan out exactly as forecasted. One, the storm track ejected out further south than what was indicated before and weakened at the same time. Two, Considerable dry air from the north was drawn into the system, which is not favorable for ice nucleation and resultant snowflake growth. There you go. And three, there were clipping, crippling blizzard conditions, just not in Kansas, but in New Mexico. Now, you put all this together, and it shows just how fickle the atmosphere can be and that it's not an exact science. A Kansas electric utility provider has contracted with a company to construct a 280-megawatt wind farm in Ford County. Westar Energy contracted the more than $400 million Western Plains wind farm with Infinity Wind Power of Santa Barbara, California. Construction is expected to start in late spring or early summer. Infinity will build the farm and then turn it over to Westar. Now, officials hope to have the farm completed by the end of 2016 or by early 2017. According to Westar, the Ford County project will include land lease royalties paid to local landowners and payments to local and county government of about $75 million during the first 20 years of operation. Utility officials say the project will create more than 200 construction jobs. And Dodge City embraces its Western heritage, and for 11 years straight, that heritage has been honored by True West Magazine. Dodge City has been tabbed the number two Western town in the magazine's 2016 Top Western Towns article. True West Magazine began its list of top Western towns 11 years ago. Dodge City has been in the top 10 all but one year. Now, according to a press release from True West Magazine, Dodge City is number two because of its Boot Hill Museum, where visitors can stroll along an 1876 replica of Front Street, including the Long Branch Saloon, and tour the original Boot Hill Cemetery. Congratulations, Dodge City. And that's a look at some of the stuff that's happening out there. Stick around. We're going to be back with kind of a chilly weather forecast. You're watching High Plains Today on TV23 with host Chris Jewell. TV23's internet service and 4G live streaming provided by United Wireless. Coverage you deserve. Service you expect. United Wireless. 
You want to feel connected, informed, included, inspired. So when important things happen, we're here. Your local TV and radio broadcasters. America's number one source for news, weather, and information. On every screen in your life. We are broadcasters. Always here for you. Wherever here may be. Text TV to 52886. Tell Washington local stations matter. Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Switch to Energy Star light bulbs, and you'll realize just how much cash you are really burning through. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. Local weather forecast for the High Plains. And welcome back. We're looking at K27 north of Elkhart, the Cimarron River Bridge. You can see there's a little bit of snow out there. And that picture just looks cold. Because, you know what? It is cold. Let's take a look at our readings here at the studio. 28 degrees relative humidity, 43%. Winds are out of the north, northwest at 12. Barometric pressure is Falling. As we take a look at the current temps around, everybody is pretty much in the 20s, except for Guymon and Perryton would be the hot spots today at 32. Would you ever think that Guymon and Perryton would be the hot spots at 30 and 32? Current dew points, you can see it is fair, relatively dry out there. Look at that, Dodge City and Garden City, Guymon, all in single digits in the dew points. Looking at our current wind speed, yep, everybody pretty much out of the north. Garden City at 18, Dodge City at 20, a little higher over here as we get over to the east where they had just a little bit more snowfall than we had. Looking at our current highs and lows recorded at the Garden City Regional Airport, 28 was the high yesterday, 73 back in 1980. 20 was our overnight low. There wasn't a lot of difference between the high and low yesterday. Minus 8 back in 1987, no measurable precipitation in the bucket. As we look at our forecast for today, yeah, it's only going to get to 33 degrees. going to be partly sunny. Winds are going to stay out of the north at 15. And then tonight, yeah, 13 degrees. hi yeah, yeah. You may want to throw an extra blanket on or turn the thermostat up just a little bit. Winds will be out of the north at 5. Then they're going to switch. They're going to be pretty much calm. And then tomorrow, hey, we're going to get up to 34. But the sunshine's going to help. Going to be mostly sunny tomorrow. Winds will be out of the east at 13. And then tomorrow night, there is a 50% chance of some precipitation coming in here. 13 degrees will be our overnight low. It's going to be mostly cloudy. Probably, they're saying, not going to be much more than a half an inch of snow. Winds are going to be out of the east, northeast at 6, and then they're going to drop off to be light and variable. As we look at our 7-day, you can see, yeah, that's 30s all the way through. Maybe start to warm up as we get into Saturday and Sunday, 42 and 44 on the weekend. But... At those lows, all going to be in the teens for the next seven days. Yes, sir, folks, winter is here. That's a look at our weather. Stick around. We'll be back with the markets and Mr. Ryan Petty after this.
same time next week? Well, of course. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free tips to help you save, go to Feed the Pig. kitchen surfaces, utensils, and hands with soapy water. One in six Americans will get sick from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. When some people struggle with their mortgage payments, they become frozen, petrified, not knowing what to do, they do nothing. But the people who do something, the people who take action, are far more likely to get the most positive outcome. Making Home Affordable is a free government program. Call now to talk one-on-one -on -one with a housing expert about the options that are right for you. Real help, real answers, right now. Separate raw meats from other foods by using different cutting boards. 3,000 Americans will die from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. And oh, welcome back. I'm now joined by one of my longtime good friends, the ginger himself, Mr. Ryan Petty. How are you, buddy? Good, Chris. How are you? I haven't seen you for a day or two. I know. It's been a while. It's been yes. too long, Chris. It has. That's true. That's true. It's been too long. Things good? Things are good. Good holiday? Great holiday. All I right. probably ate too much, but you know how that goes. You're, you're supposed to. Yeah. You're yeah. supposed to. All right. Ryan's going to talk to us today about where we at. We're over here now. <laughs> He's going to talk. Now, if there's anything you want to know about college basketball, this is our guy, okay? So we're going to talk to him about college basketball. We're going to get into the top 10, but we're going to talk a lot about the Big 12 because that season gets started with conference here next week, and he's my guy, right? Yes, sir. You, are my, you are my Big 12 guy, yep. as well as being a KU <laughs> graduate. Yeah, I'm not biased at all. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, so Michigan State, ranked number one. Yep. Their last game, they had kind of an iffy, mm -hmm. iffy, iffy go at it. Yeah. I saw the end of that game. It went into, I, I think, one overtime. Uh, but Oakland came out. They played well. 
and uh, they, they gave them all they wanted. And, you know, it's kind of funny. I remember seeing Oakland play when I was at KU because uh, they came to the field house, and I, I, didn't, I didn't know where Oakland was at. And they're actually, <laughs> they're, they're located in Michigan. So they actually, oh, really? Yeah, okay. Yeah, they played that cool. game. Uh, they played that game at Auburn Hills where uh, the Pistons play. Right. So it was, it's, I mean, it's obviously not that big of a rivalry, but it's a Michigan State thing. So, and uh, I guess it's kind of be comparable to uh, Wichita State, Kansas, kind of. But Oakland played them really well and uh, went to overtime. And I think Michigan State's starting to feel a little pressure being number one. So. You think they're, you think now, has Michigan State got really a good team? I yeah, mean, does Michigan's, Izzo have yes, a good team yes, again? Yes, he does. He's got a good team. Um, obviously, like I said, me being a KU alum, I, I think that KU gave them the game when they played in the Champions Classic in Chicago early in the year. But Michigan right. State is legit. They're a very good team this year. So okay. I, I look for them to make another deep run like Izzo, Izzo does almost every year. So Yeah, he's kind of been known for that lately. Yeah. Okay, so then you've got KU now in the, in the AP poll. Uh -huh. KU is number two, OU number three. Yep. But if you look at the coaches poll, mm -hmm. they have them flipped. The coaches have OU number two, KU number yep. three. Now, uh, for that reason, I really don't know. I mean, I would, I, I would think that the coaches just, they're a little bit old school. OU hasn't lost the game yet. And, um, but have I'm, they played anybody? Now, KU, see, they lost to Michigan yep, State. Has KU, exactly. I mean, has OU played anybody of Michigan State stature yet? Not really. They did, uh, they, they did actually, they played this last week. They won the uh, Hawaii tournament. Right. And, uh, but they, they really haven't played. But once again, I'll say OU is legit. They return almost everybody from the team. They, they've got... I was watching their game the other day. They said they have four starters that have started the last three years. So, and Buddy Hild, who won the uh, Big 12 Player of the Year last year, he barely uh, he narrowed it out. He beat Perry Ellis by a very small margin. He's one of the best players in the country. He, he'll be an All-American. He 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 actually uh, he broke the uh, the scoring record at that Hawaii tournament. Scored like 80 something points. So, That's kind of good news if you're an OU <laughs> fan, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, uh, because they haven't. They've been close several years, yeah. but this year they're even closer. It's a good time to be an OU sports fan right now. And they're and they're and they're looking to upset KU and take them off the top of the heap in the Big Twelve so that they don't yep. get that twelfth trophy in a row. Yep, that'll be interesting to see. I, I I look at it right now as, and I know it, we haven't played any games yet, but I think it's a three-team race. It'll be obviously between KU, Oklahoma, and Iowa State, and those three teams are actually all ranked in the top ten. Nationally, so I mean, I think it's going to be a great race between those uh, three teams. And actually, KU starts off uh, Big Twelve play on the uh, third on a Saturday uh, against Baylor. That's right, this Saturday. It, it, let's see, is that this Saturday? Is that the third? Yes. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They play Baylor or Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Sunday. Okay. Well, it's a Saturday. Maybe it's a second. It's okay. a second. They play right. on the second. Okay. And then they turn around, and then Monday they play Oklahoma. So they go Saturday, Monday. Luckily, they're both at home. Big 12 gets started right away. And Baylor, Baylor is another team that they're probably the fourth best team in the conference. So it's, it's going to be interesting to see, see if KU can do it again. All right, so without Hoiberg at Iowa State, mm -hmm. you think they're still going to be in the running? I, I really do. They have, a, they have a very um, mature team, a lot of senior players. It, I kind of compare it to whenever, um, whenever Roy left KU and Self came in. It, kind of same thing. KU had a really... Uh, uh, a really mature senior-led team, yeah. and I, I, they're really good, so I think they'll still have a good time. I think they might have some ups and downs early, but by the end, I think they'll be ready to go. Nyang, Nyang, is Nyang, Nyang a senior Nyang yet? Is a senior. He's one of those guys that you think he's has like been Perry there for eight years. Exactly. He's Perry, you, you, you know, a kid stays at a school for four years, yep. and you think he's been there for 12. Mm -hmm. Especially at a, a big-time school where you yeah. see all the time. And if yeah. they play since they're freshmen, and that's exactly what's happened with him and, like, Perry Ellis, you see him, they, they play as freshmen right away, and... They continue to play every year, and you're like, wow, has that guy graduated yet? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so how do you think K-State and the rest of the Big, T Big 12 I think ends up? I, I like those four teams that I talked about earlier, uh, KU, Iowa State, Oklahoma, and Baylor. I like those four teams. And then the rest of the conference, I think, is wide open. I have no I, – I am – I'm actually shocked how good K-State is. I mean, I saw them last year, and towards the end of the year, uh, they were just completely falling apart, and they had, some, they had some guys on that team that probably didn't need to be on that team and now aren't on that team, and I think that just some new guys came in, and they had a completely different mindset. And the kid, uh, the Wade kid from St. John's, he's, he's a stud. And I, I think, I think K-State will surprise some people. I think they'll finish in the middle of the conference. When At the beginning of the year, I thought that they were going to be towards the lower end of the conference. Really? But yeah. All right, so who do you think is going to be the big gun or the workhorse for KU in order for them to get a 12th trophy? 
I think it'll be it'll, Perry Ellis is going to have to he's going to have to carry the team again. But I mean they they they're just so deep this year that it could be anyone any different night. Now this Brad kid mm-hmm. for KU yeah. he's kind of he's a nice surprise. Yes, he, he is. He's he's really he's really raw. I hearing self talk the other day. He said that the only thing that he's really struggling right now is just finishing around the rim, and he's going to get better at that as the year goes on and he gets more time and. It's, it's exciting. I'm really excited this year. I really think they can make a deep run just like they almost do every year, but we'll see. It'll be fun to watch KU because they do have a lot of big guys to help complement yep. Ellis. And they the do. guard play this year with uh, Mason and Graham. Graham. Yep. Graham has been a, kind of a pleasant surprise so far this year also. Yep, he has been. And it's nice because it's, it's, whenever Graham and Mason are on the court, it's like you got two point guards on the court yeah. at, at all times. So... You don't really have, if a team wants to press you, well, good luck. You're probably going to get layups on the other end if you want to press <laughs> KU. So with those guys, that's, it's nice to have. And you so. look, okay, so let's get back to the, now, we know that the, the, the Big 12 is going to be a dogfight. Mm-hmm. What other conference out, I mean, do you see the Big 10 being stout again this year with I think, Michigan and Maryland? I think, the Michigan Big 10, State? I think the Big 10 will be a little bit down this year, and that's just, well, you just look at different teams. There will be some teams that were up last year that will be down this year, so, such as Wisconsin with Bo Ryan. He's already resigned, and that's well, yeah, a whole he other, lost all his guys. That's a whole other conversation. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel bad for that guy. He's gonna he's gonna be regretting that title game for the rest of his life. Um, but Wisconsin will be down. I thought Ohio State would be down because they weren't playing well at first, but then they beat Kentucky. So you never know about Ohio State since since they beat Kentucky. Um, Purdue Purdue will be a pleasant surprise. Purdue will be very good this year. Really? Yeah. And then well, and you talk about the ACC and the SEC. I mean, Kentucky losses. I mean, mm-hmm. not in the top ten. Yeah, that I, I was kind of surprised that uh, that their their ranking at the beginning of the year because I knew they were going to be young because they lost six seven guys to the draft. Yeah, and I know that they're bringing in studs, but when you're bringing in, <laughs> you're having to bring in five new guys. who yes. were playing at the high school level now at the college level. I was surprised that they were that high, but they will they will have their uh, their lumps throughout the year, and I think they've already had a couple that you've seen. So. Yeah, but they had, Louisville gave them a close game. The Louisville other night. did. Yep. That was a good game. Yeah. Um, uh, SEC, just another guy. LSU uh, has one of the best players in the country. Oh, really? The Simmons kid. He's just, this, a lot of people are comparing him to LeBron, the, the, the best player since LeBron. And he's, wow. Some of his numbers that he's put up this year are amazing. So okay. anytime, uh, LSU is going to, their team is not that great, but he makes them he's a lot gonna better. He's going to shine. Yeah, he okay. will definitely shine. All right. Well, so. Brian's in my ear telling me we got to go. All right. Ryan, this is fun. It was fun. And there's two things that Ryan and I can agree on. <laughs> Rock Chalk and Go Chiefs, right? Yep. All right. Stick around. I'll be back with more right after this. Hi, I'm Chris Jewell, host of High Plains Today, a 30-minute news and information program that airs at noon weekdays right here on TV23. Hey, do you think you have an idea for something that would make a great segment? Somebody that would make a great interview? What about a community event that needs highlighting? Let us know here at the station. Email us. News at kbgltv.com. This is the place. You want to feel connected, informed, included, inspired. So when important things happen, we're here. Your local TV and radio broadcasters. America's number one source for news, weather, and information. On every screen in your life. We are broadcasters, always here for you, wherever here may be. Text TV to 52886. Tell Washington local stations matter. foods to the right temperature using a food thermometer. 3,000 Americans will die from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov.
And welcome back. Hey, Kansas City held off the Cleveland Browns yesterday. 17-13 for a franchise record tying ninth straight victory and then clinched a spot in the playoffs when Pittsburgh lost to Baltimore. Now, if they beat Oakland this coming week at Arrowhead Stadium and the Broncos lose to Cincinnati on Monday night or next week against San Diego, Kansas City would capture the most improbable of AFC West titles. Can you believe that? And the Minnesota Vikings have secured place in the postseason, playing as if they are poised for more than a token appearance. Adrian Peterson ran for 104 yards and a touchdown. He only played three quarters yesterday. Harrison Smith took of one of Eli Manning's three interceptions into the end zone, and the Vikings clinched at least a wild card spot with a 49-17 victory over the New York Giants last night. And the Arizona Cardinals flattened poor Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers yesterday. That makes it nine straight wins for the Cardinals also, who think they're still gaining steam. The Cardinals sacked Rodgers eight times and returned two of his fumbles for touchdowns in a 38-8 romp yesterday. Man, they put it on them. That was really something to see. And let's take a last look at our weather as we get ready to get out of here today. Hey. It's up to 29 degrees. It was 28 a little bit ago. Relative humidity, 40%. Winds are picking up a little bit. They're out of the straight north at 15. It is cloudy. Barometric pressure is starting to fall. As we look at our seven-day forecast, you can see we're going to stay in the mid-30s pretty much all week. We're going to warm up a little bit, I guess, if you can call it. Highs in the 40s, low 40s for Saturday and Sunday. There is a 50% chance of some snow sticking around tomorrow. I want to thank Ryan Petty for being here. Hey, tomorrow, Trooper Racy with a K KHP will be here. Call the cable operator. Keep up to date long. with the latest information from TV23 on our Facebook page, KDGL-TV. Hi, Chris Jewell, host of High Plains Today, a 30-minute news and information program that airs weekdays at noon right here on TV23. We talk about news, we talk about sports, we talk about weather, we're even going to talk entertainment. We'll have live guests right here on set with me. So, every day at noon, tune in, High Plains Today. We'll see you then. Weekdays, here on TV23. and prepared foods promptly. One in six Americans will get sick from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. There's something I feel when I'm right here.